I hope you're ready, you guys. I am here to tell you about two of my absolute favorite reads of 2019. I could not be more excited to tell you about these books. So let's get started. Everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are having a fantastic week and I hope that your reading is going as well as mine is. I am currently still getting myself through the National Book Award long list for fiction, the 10 titles. I am just about done with book six on that list. So I have four to go and yeah, they are flying by. I'm really enjoying a lot of them. I have a lot to say, so I cannot wait to review that. But today I am here to tell you about two absolutely fantastic books, two of my absolute favorite reads of 2019. And usually I do my read and reviews in books of three, but these books really speak to each other and really spoke to me. And I think they super stand out as far as what I have read in 2019. So I cannot wait to tell you about them. Um, the first book Oh, I should say, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep control of your TBR. If you are so able, please pre-order these books or order them from your local independent bookstore or have your library order them or pre-order them for you so you can get your hands on them as soon as possible. So let's get started. One book is already out, so I'll start there, and then the other book is coming out in the future, so I'll uh, do that one second. The first book I'm going to tell you about is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. Now, this came out in September. You guys can get your hands on it right now, and I'm telling you to go do it because it's amazing. Now, I had the honor of seeing Jacqueline Woodson last night at Bookshop Santa Cruz in conversation with Carolina de Robertis. Um, I apologize if I'm getting Carolina's last name wrong. Um, I will be talking about her actually in a video in a couple days because I bought her new book, so I'll get it right when I read it off the cover. Um, but they were fantastic, fantastic to, with each other. Um, Jacqueline Woodson, as you guys know if you watch my channel, is one of my literary heroes. She has such talent across so many, so many genres. Um, she writes picture books for young children. She writes middle grade, YA, and adult fiction. And Red at the Bone is is her first adult fiction book since she wrote Another Brooklyn, which uh, if you guys haven't read, you really should because it is brilliant in its own right in so many ways. Um, what is Red at the Bone? So let's sort of break it down as far as the story goes. The story starts with a young girl named Melody at her cotillion. We learn that she's a 16-year-old young woman and she is the daughter of Iris and Aubrey. And Iris had Melody when she was 15 or 16, right before she was going to have her own cotillion. And this is really the story of how that pregnancy, that young pregnancy, affected the lives of Iris and Aubrey, the parents, who Melody becomes as a teenager, and also Iris's parents, Sadie and Poboy. Now, they really have the voices in this book. They each, all of those characters that I just mentioned, have their own sections and their own um, points of view that they sort of tell this story from. Um, the book really focuses on this idea of the relationship between Iris and Aubrey and how Melody sort of changes their paths in the future, um, where they want to go after they have the baby at a young age. And it's also about the dynamics of family. Now, Iris is a very, I want to say she's a multifaceted, complicated, not all the time likable, but deeply sympathetic woman. Um, she, when she finds out she is pregnant with Melody, she very much wants to keep her daughter. She wants to have the child. But then she recognizes that, um, as Jacqueline Woodson said last night, that baby's going to stick around. And that, that she doesn't know exactly what that means. And she also knows that she doesn't want the baby to derail her from what she sort of sees as her future. Now, Aubrey, the father, is a little bit different in that he has as much potential. However, when he finds out he's going to be a father, he sort of comes to this realization that he wants to sort of hunker down. He wants to get a job, support his family, support and love his daughter. And he doesn't need to have any sort of additional ambition outside of that. What I really love is that this book takes that sort of 
that relationship and those two angles. Because when I was reading it, I was thinking if Aubrey and Iris were reversed, if Aubrey was the man who the baby came and he decided to still be so a uh, career driven or education driven, no one would sort of, it doesn't stand out as any, any sort of narrative um, surprise. And if Iris had decided or almost was forced to sort of settle down into motherhood, that wouldn't have been a narrative surprise. What the book does is it says, we don't, this is not what always happens. People don't always fall into those roles. And Iris doesn't want to fall into that maternal normal role. She has ambition. And that is really sort of her driving force. She also has a very complicated relationship with Aubrey, the father of her child. In a lot of ways, you'll see that she is very tender to him, but you can see that she doesn't, she, when she has the baby and finds out she's pregnant, that she, he's not part of the future as she so sees it. We also have Sabi and Poboy, who are the parents of Iris. Now, Sabi is a very sort of put together um, woman, and she has a lot of family history, and she sort of spreads that family history through her daughter and through her granddaughter. One of the inspirations for this book, as Jacqueline Woodson talked about, was the Tulsa race riots. I want to think, I think it was, they happened in 1921. And the character of Sabi, her mother was one of the victims of those riots and she was forever scarred by that event and that event then sort of trickles down through Sabi into Iris into Melody into sort of how the world is looked at and there's a great section I'm not gonna I don't want to read it because I want you to read it but see how Sabi feels about the state of Oklahoma because of the way that um, the Tulsa race riots had really um, the Tulsa race massacre had really um, affected her um, family and her upbringing. What this book is about, this book is about the multi-dimensional aspects of love. Love from all different angles. Love from mothers to daughters, parents to grandparents, um, fathers to their children, to their daughters. It's a lot about Aubrey has a fantastically complicated relationship with his own mother, and he is just one lovable, lovable guy. The grandfather is just, I um, talked about it last night, it was sort of my question, because there's a section where the grandfather, Poe Boy, has Melody as a child on her his lap, and she's asleep, and he's having this conversation. And I read it over and over again, just because of the heartwarming, love nature. Like, it was just so to the bone about how people can love one another unconditionally. This book deals with a lot of tough subjects as well. It deals with how an act, an act of such violence as the t uh, Tulsa race massacres, or um, uh, how that can affect a family for generations to come. But it also deals with the dynamics between people who have children, but their relationship isn't what it would uh, is expected. It's about people and the society in which they live when someone gets pregnant and then they sort of are looked at differently in the decisions they make and do they stay where they're at or do they leave? And if they leave, how do they start a new life? Um, Jacqueline Woodson's prose are absolutely gorgeous. You guys know she's a poet by nature and there's a lot of poetic nature to her writing. And there's even some repetition in this that really adds a powerful, powerful punch at certain times. Because of the poetic nature of the writing, it just makes sense. I will warn you there, by the end of this book, you will absolutely be in tears. I was bawling my eyes out. Um, and it is, it's just a beautiful, beautiful story. And I could not recommend it more. So this is Jacqueline Woodson's Red at the Bone. This is out from Riverhead Books right now. I was so happy to see her see a little signature. It's so wonderful. She's just great. And I really recommend this. If you guys do get a chance to read it and you want to talk to me about it, please, please feel free to do so. Um, you can email me at russell at inkandpaperblog.com and I will talk to you about it all day long. So this absolutely one of my top three reads of 2019. A book that is also probably up there in those top three reads is a book that comes out. I want to say it's November 5th. Is it November 5th? November 5th from Counterpoint Books, and that is The Revisionaries by Margaret Wilkerson Sexton. 
Margaret Wilkerson Sexton was long listed for the National Book Award last year, or two years ago now, for her novel, A Kind of Freedom, which I absolutely adored. I think The Revisionaries is even, even better. It's just phenomenal. So what is this book about? This book is a also a family story, but it's told in two different generations. We have Ava. Ava is in 2017. She is of mixed race and she has just lost her job. She is a single mother and she is decided that she is going to move in with her grandmother, her white grandmother, who she does not know very well, because her grandmother needs caretaking and she needs to get on her feet because she's just lost her job. She has a young son that she's taking care of and she thinks financially that if her grandmother is offered to pay her, that she can save that money to start a life for her son. The other part of the book is told in two different time periods with the same character and that is Josephine and that is Ava's great, great grandmother, I believe. I may have an extra grade in there, I apologize. Um, but Josephine, um, half of her story is told in um, 1924 when she is the owner. She is, um, her husband has passed away and she is the owner of a bunch of land that used to be slave plantations that her, fa her husband became the owner of. And now her and her family run it and they have different people on it running the land and farming the land and all that. The other time period is 1855. I'm looking down to make sure I don't get any of the dates right. 1855, where we see Josephine as a young girl being raised by her mother on a plantation and her mother and her father and her and sort of this idea of escaping, escaping the slave plantation and finally getting away. Um, Josephine's mother is sort of, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but she has sort of this she, re she leads the people, um, the different slaves that live on the plantation in sort of a type of worship service where they worship a different sort of spiritual entity and they think about the world and they have sort of a connection with the earth and each other. And one of the things they do on the plantation is every year they draw rocks and whoever gets this special rock is sort of helped off the plantation and hel helped north. Um, Josephine's family is, uh, her, her father actually gets the rock and then there's a decision to make to flee the plantation. In the modern times for Josephine, so 1924, she has just had a new neighbor moved in, a young white couple, where she sort of starts to befriend the wife who is struggling with um, fertility, trying to get pregnant, and she is in an abusive relationship where we then find out that the young girl has joined a group, a group um, that she is starting to sort of find her footing in. And we learn um, very quickly that that group is the KKK and how that affects Josephine and her family in 1924. Now, Ava's relationship is twofold. She is living with her great grandmother, with her grandmother, a woman who has never really gotten to know Josephine and sort of had, I'm sorry, know Ava and struggles with the fact that Ava is of mixed race. There's a number of instances where you see that the grandmother struggles with her own internal and external racism. Um, and you learn about how um, the grandmother felt about Ava's mother when brought home. Um, Ava's mother is also a fantastically interesting character in this book. She is a woman who has left sort of her normal profession to become a doula and help woman women through pregnancy. But we also learn very early on that she is sick. She is, um, she has a cancer and she is not expected to survive, but she has sort of a whimsical spirituality, which really connects her in with Josephine's mother um, and sort of this family dynamic through history, which is really, really well done. This book deals with parenting. This deal book deals with family. It absolutely, I should hold it up because I've been talking about it so long and it's been on my lap. This book deals with family. This book deals with race. This di book deals with creating relationship with relationships with others and when people break that relationship and sort of the heartbreak and um, just the sadness that comes when people let you down. And oftentimes the people that let us down the most can be those that we think should love us the most, um, which I think is a very powerful statement. Um, I think 
every character in this is so well developed that you will really feel i i really loved ava as a person i really felt the struggles that she was going through it just her situation seemed so real and yeah it's she's just amazing. Josephine is a woman that I wish I could go meet and have coffee with. Actually, there's instances where she talks about some of the food that she cooks. And um, Margaret made me so hungry because it just sounds delicious. Um, so I'll go and we can cook together and then eat. And Josephine and I can be friends because her life is fantastic. And Josephine deals with race in her own way. And you kind of see how Josephine's dealing with race in 1855, 1924, has traveled through to 2017 and Ava's dealing with race and how and as different as it is, it's still the same at times. It really tackles some really tough but subject matter, but from such a soft and beautiful angle at times. It is just a lovely, lovely book. It is beautifully written. Margaret um, Wilkerson Sexton can write a sentence like nobody else. Um, it is just perfect. I think to me, I know this is only her second novel, but whoa, this is a killer second book. So that is The Revisioners by Margaret Wilkerson Sexton. This is out from Counterpoint on November 5th, 2015. Trust me, you will want to get your hands on this. I'm going to turn this this way so that I can sew. I don't know if you guys can actually see that title, even if I hold it up. I'll do this. Um, as always, if you are a return subscriber to my channel, thank you so very, very much. If this is your first view, I hope you come back for more because I do sure like to talk about books. And until next time, I always wish you happy reading and I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.